Today we're going to finish up our Action Cable series with securing your web sockets. And there's two parts in securing your web sockets as well as with your application in general, and that is through authorization and authentication. So authentication will be, is the user currently signed in? And authorization would be, does this user have permission to subscribe and also publish on this channel? So our example application will use a fairly run-of-the-mill configuration to devise for the authentication and pund it for the authorization. So before a user can even access our chat channel, we want to make sure that they are logged in first. So once a user logs in, they should be able to access the chat channel, which means that Action Cable should now subscribe the user to this chat channel so that they can broadcast and also receive messages. So part of the security of our WebSockets is that we wouldn't even want a user to subscribe to a channel or even get communication back and forth from Action Cable if they're not signed in. And we'll see in a minute where we'll put some protection around the actual connection to Action Cable. And in order to do that, we then need to put in some assurances that the user is not hammering our server every five seconds with a connection request to Action Cable. So the first thing that we can do is, if you remember from our previous episode, we added this Action Cable Meta Tag Helper into our layouts file. And we can make this to where it only is going to exist if the current user exists, or if we're using device, we can just change this to user signed in. So within our app assets javascripts cable js file, we can take this whole function and we can wrap it around if the length of this meta tag exists. So we can just use some jQuery, if the length of this meta tag, so if this meta tag is present, it will execute the function below and create our action cable consumer. So within our JavaScript channels chat JS file, we can wrap our whole app chat function here with the same check if the meta tag exists. So within our app channels application cable connection file, we can check to see if the user is currently signed in. We can do this by creating the identified by current user, and then in our connection set the current user equal to a private method, find verified user. Since we are using device, we have access to the warden proxy and can return our user. If you're not using device, then you will need to find the user some other way, passing in the parameter and then just getting the user ID. So you may need to store the user ID in a session and then access it from here. So if the user is found, then we'll return the current user. Otherwise, we'll send the reject unauthorized connection. And it is this rejection that will cause the action cable connection to keep trying every five seconds. So thanks to the changes that we just made, we've now limited Action Cable to not connect because it won't be sending that command from the client side. So if you're not using device, you can set a cookie by setting the cookies.signed, setting a user ID equals to the, your current user's ID, and then you can also set a expiration time so the user would only be able to access the Action Cable if it's within this expiration time. And then within your Action Cable connection, you can have your method for the find verified user to something like this where you're finding the user and then you're passing in the ID of the user that you had stored in the cookie. And then also verifying that the user does exist and the cookie is greater than time.now. And then also make sure that if you are setting the cookie that you are setting it to nil once the user logs off. In our message model, even though we're not making any changes as a refresher, we do have this after create commit callback that's going to enqueue a job that will broadcast out our message over the action cable channel. So in our messages controller, we have our authorized message, which is a part of Pundit, which will check the policies if the user has access to create the message. And if they do not have access to create the message, then that callback in our model would never have triggered. So within our chat channel, we are still streaming from chat. And while we could make the chat string something pretty ambiguous, I actually like putting some authorization around here. So what I would like to do here is actually just leave it as chat for now, but then also set this to where they're only going to stream from this chat if the current user's email is equal to the example that we made. Now you could create a pundit policy or tie into an existing one for your chats or messages that would limit the user based on some certain criteria that you would have for your channel. So back in our application, I am signed in as our John Doe example user. And if I refresh the page, we can look at the WebSocket and see that we are connected to our channel. So if I type a message, 
you'll see that it does broadcast it out. If I sign out, under our WebSockets in the developer tools, we have no connection to our action cable. And if we sign up as a different user, and if we inspect the WebSockets, you'll see that they are getting the access to the subscriber channel. However, if we now go in to type a message, they do have the access to type in the message. You'll see that it doesn't appear to be broadcasted out. However, it actually was. It was just that this Jane Doe user doesn't have access to stream from that channel. So as Jane Doe, if we were to refresh the page, you'll see the message pops up. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.